<laughs> All right, Sedge, what we got on tap for today? Okay, um, you know the four laws of the domino, right? Yep. Okay, so today we're gonna take those four laws and we're gonna go to the most common joints that have come up over the years with me and showing people how to use the domino and we'll step through a bevel joint, a mitre joint, a butt joint, and a board in the middle joint. That's four. So there you go, stay tuned as we go through each one. Okay, so let's practice what we preach. Right. All right, we're gonna do a mitre joint and every time we work today on these four joints, we're gonna work with those four laws because it's really imperative. And the other thing too that's important is you get yourself in this routine of going through this and you'll have less mistakes. Okay, so the first one is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark my referenced face. Okay. Okay, so what's the next one? Uh, work off the table. Okay, so the nice thing about the Vax is it allows us to work off the table. So I'm just going to swing it here. And I'll do, the, I'll do the first joint for us, okay? Now, the really nice thing about the domino and doing a mitre joint, okay, is we are going to reference. You see this flap? There's my reference face. I'm going to put that up against the plate. But that's the long point of a mitre and that's the short point. So we're going to reference that flap there. Okay. Hence, we're going to use the precision of the machine, so I'm going to do it in a tight setting. Okay. Okay. We're going to be using a 5 by 30, so 5 being a thickness, 30 being the length. Okay, so <laughs> what's half of 30? 15! Man, he's good at metrics. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our plunge depth at 15. Perfect. And this is 20 millimeter thick. Okay. So I'm going to put 20 in the window here, see it? And now I can reference the plate pretty much in the daggone center of this. Sounds good. So I'm going to do the first one and then I'll have you do the next one. Alright, sounds good. Okay, so before I turn this on, there's two more laws that we have to cover. Uh -huh. Okay, we said, listen, reference the plate off the face. Yep. Number two was work off the table. Yep. I'm not, the base is not on the table, for a clarification. What's the third one? Plunge in line. Okay, and the fourth one? Plunge at a steady rate. Ah, grasshopper. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna reference that. And you see how I have the machine back here? I just, it forces me to plunge in line. So, the fourth one is plunge at a steady rate. It's really easy to hear that one, where if you get a lot of chatter, then you know. So I'm gonna have you come over here, Big D. I'm gonna swing it around, and you're gonna do the next one right there. Okay, so, go ahead and take that off with the foot pedal. Okay, and let me look at that. Wow! That's about the best mortise I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, so we have the reference face. And I want to make sure you guys all see this, hopefully. I did this on purpose, okay? See that right there? These are not the same thickness. Mm. But what you want is we referenced off of this face. And you wanted that long point to long point to meet. So the nice thing about that, because we did both of them tight, and when I bring that in, that is perfectly level. But the really nice thing <coughs> with this is now we can use right angle clamps. So if you're doing a, a four miter on there, you can use just two regular Bessie K bodies and it'll all go together because there's no creep along the joint. It's a locked joint. Nice. All right, with the first one done, let's work on number two. Okay, so we're gonna do a bevel joint. Okay, say you're building a box. Okay, and here's your domino right here. We're gonna use a five by 30. You said, hey, what are we gonna use a four by 20? No, five by 30 because I want all this much glue line. Now, if we left this height set at 20, you would have a through mortise. Gotcha. Okay, so we need to bring it all the way up so we have to bottom out the fence. And I'll, I'll go over that in a few seconds. Okay, this is one of those joints that I've seen a lot of people have difficulty with. Okay, and you have to set your fence and your angle on your fence first and then bottom it out. And I'll go over that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you do this board right here. And we're gonna set it up for success, okay? You're gonna use the flaps and come from the side, okay? But you always reference the inside. I'm gonna do this side, and you're gonna see how perfect this comes together. Excellent. But then I'm gonna take a step where I'm gonna, this will be mine, 
and I'll show you how easy it is to mess this up. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we'll set this aside, is we're gonna take our machine, okay? And this is a 45 and that's a 45. So we'll take this and we'll bring it to that positive detent at 45. A great way to check this, to say you have it, because we're gonna be working off this face, is bringing it in just like this and you'll see how it just matches up perfectly nice. to here and here. All right, now, the next thing we're gonna do is because we want that domino at the very top here, okay, we wanna bottom out the fence. Okay. Okay, so now we release our height of our plate here. We take this and we move the gauge block all the way out and we bottom it out. Got it. Okay, now check this out. Another reference for that is that steel right there matches that steel. Okay? Perfect. So I'm gonna have you, well actually, I'll come over and do this one and then I'll have you do these two. Then I'll come back and I'll show you where you can get confused. Sounds good. Okay, so we have our bevel set at 45. Yep. I always double check everything. It's bottomed out and I have it set at 15 because we're using that five by 30. I'm also gonna be using the flap right here. So let's turn it on. And the other thing I wanna coach you on is I always feel the flat of that and I rotate it in. We'll do all these tight, okay. because we're using the flap, precision of the machine. So what I'll do is I'll have you do these two. Okay. Okay, go ahead and turn it off and leave it. So, what I was watching here on this, is making sure the plate is flat because there's a tendency because of the bevel it rides up a little but you maintain that with your pressure so it was perfectly flat good job thanks okay so you did a great job on those all right uh, this one's a little bit better because that's the one i did <laughs> okay so check it out let's put this together and see how this top edge, and Chris, we're gonna get it from a bunch of different angles, but see how that comes right together. Look, feel that. It's perfectly flush. And the nice thing about this is that long point to long point comes really perfect on there. So once again, you can use a couple of Bessie K bodies to bring that entire box together. Wow. Okay, so let's step through this. And I'm gonna do this one right here, okay? But I'm gonna take it a step further to show you where you can get really turned around or confused with it. Okay. All right, so let's take this a step further. Do you remember the process we used to set up the machine to get this perfect mortise and, and layout? Yes, you set the angle first. Okay, so what if I don't do that? What if I start like we did before uh -huh. and I go like this, and this is very common. I used to do this. I'm gonna take it and bottom it out. Go ahead and press down on that, and I'm gonna lock it in. Now I'm gonna set the angle to 45. Okay, let me show you what happens. You think it's the same, right? Right. And I can tell you right now, this can be very frustrating, but that is what you get. Okay, because the plate gets hung up on the flaps. So remember how I had you push this down? I'm gonna release this again, go ahead and push it. It doesn't fully bottom out. Really? And that is the result you get. Yeah, wow. so there's another tip for you. All right, <laughs> number three, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so we'll call this a butt joint, which it is, but it's also what you use for a side of a cabinet, okay, or putting a box together. We're butting the two pieces together. Okay, so let's just say, and I like to label everything. This is your side, okay? This is your either top or bottom, we'll call it the bottom. Okay, but here's the most important part. Label, label, label where we're gonna be placing this plate. Gotcha. And you can get turned around really quick. I've seen a variety of ways of doing this, but <clears throat> the bottom and the top always go between the sides because you want that sheer strength of your domino. So if we come in here, Chris, right here, I'm gonna make a mark just like this. And that is not to where I'm gonna put a domino, it's where I'm going to place the plate. So of course, if I look at the plate here, we're gonna plunge horizontal. And on here, 
these dominoes are going to be just like this. And I can, I've seen people do this. That's where they want a domino, and that's where they want a domino. Okay, we're going to plunge vertically. Now, what comes to my brain every time I do this, I'll do the vertical ones, I'll have you do the ones horizontal. Okay. Okay. <coughs> what comes to my brain every time I see vertical is I put on the support bracket. That way there it doesn't tip. Okay, so I'm going to take that, and yes, we'll reference the pins here. Okay. Okay, or the flaps. So I'm going to take it like this, and here's a really great tip. A lot of people will hold this, start it up, and plunge. I like to take it like this, bring that flap in there, and you see where my pressure is? It's right against here. So I'm going to turn this on, and plunge vertically. Okay? What I think I'm going to do, Big D, is I'm going to have you come over here and do the same. With, okay. I'm going to have you do one of each with me. Okay. So you can get the feel of this. Sounds good. Perfect. Right. Wow. That's the best mortise I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go horizontal. This one's easy. Okay. We'll just take it like this. I'm going to reference the flat. Flap. I like to take it, pivot it in. There's my line. I know my plate's right on. I'm going to take it. Plunge at a steady rate. Have you come over and do the same. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to take it like this. And we'll put the, the dominoes in. Okay, just like this. All right. Now. Here's where I've seen so many people struggle with this. Okay, look, you see how that's perfectly flush in there? Yeah, baby. Okay, now, you're going to see or do this, and the reason I had, had us, or I made the mark on there to put the plate, is I've seen so many people say, I can't get a flush butt joint, because what they do is they don't reference the outside, they uh. reference the inside. Okay. okay, so always make that mark and you'll have great success. So, here comes joint number four. All right, so we're trying to put this right in the middle. And I know we've done it before, but walk me through it again. Okay, so a lot of people try to complicate this. So a lot of people say, hey, I set up a dado stack on my table saw. Well, I have a much easier way. Let's use the domino. Okay. Okay. And as long as we know, and I always write this, this is the top. This is my shelf, okay, this is the top of my shelf, okay, and if we want it right here, per se, okay, just like this, I'll bring it in like this, what I'll do is I'll just take it like this, this is just a rough line, okay, okay. but it's alignment line, and I'll write top, this is the top of my shelf, okay, and I'll show you how to set this up. Let's do it. So not overthinking, but understanding the domino machine. The distance from the base, because we use the base as our reference now, to the center of that domino cutter is 10 millimeters. That's one of those things you should always remember. So if this is 20 millimeter ply or 18, I always have this little thing in my head that always says, take the top of the shelf and put it to the top of the top of the line. Sounds funny, but I always think in my head, top to top. So I'm gonna fold it forward. Hopefully we can get in here and I'm gonna bring it to that line. Right, and then I'm gonna take my clamps and just come in here like this. Okay, so one more point I wanna show you. See right here? Remember I told you the distance from here to the center of the bit is 10 millimeter? Mm -hmm. That is exactly a 10 millimeter because that right there, Garen, those are ground to match the center of the cutter. Oh wow. Okay, so we're gonna be using the flaps now for our reference point. Okay. All right, now I'll do this side and I'll have you do this side. It's really easy because you'll see how we do this, but I'm going to take it like this. See that flap just like that. That base is on here now. I'm just going to take it and plunge. Then I'm going to take it, I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to bring that right up. But this piece here has become my set. So I'm just taking a plunge vertically here. And I'll have you do this side. And you see how it'll match up perfect. No pressure. <laughs> 
So let's see how we did. Go ahead and take that clamp off. Okay, let's put these in here like this. Toit and toit. Okay, so there's the top of my shelf, right? Yep. And there you go. So, wow. it matches up perfect and you can build a shelf joint all day long. And it's kind of like we have it down to a T, right? Hey! So as you can see, by using the four laws, you can create absolutely perfect joints because we labeled everything, right? Yep. We took our time, we worked off the table the majority of the time, and you can create a perfect butt joint, a great shelf joint. Yep. You get a great bevel joint and a great miter joint. So there you go. It's just uh, an easy exercise to understand the basics of the domino. So as we always say, be positive, stay shy.